Now, as crazy as it is to consider, in a little over a month, this version of Warzone that we're playing now will be moved over for the next generation. This, if we want to call it legacy version of Warzone, will be its own sort of bubble and the last three years can be sort of capped off. While support will still be happening, the servers won't be shutting down or anything like that, and you're more than able to jump on and play with all your saved items, experiences, and Caldera, and all that kind of stuff, the primary focus will shift to the next version of Warzone. So, in a sort of celebration of the last few years, I want to take a look at the absolute rarest blueprints that you could have during these last two and a half to nearly three years. There's over 1,100 blueprints, maybe even way more than that, but today we're running down all the rarest ones, so let me know in the comments below, how many do you have? If you enjoyed the video, you found it at Alan Seifel, do me a favor and drop a like on the video and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe to stay updated with all things modern warfare 2 warzone 2 and dmz here the next couple days to weeks to months are going to be incredibly busy with how much is coming up for the call of duty scene we're on that road to half a million subscribers and i'd love to have you in the community and finally check out my friends over at gamer advantage for the best blue light glasses on the market but for now let's take a look at the rarest blueprints in warzone's history now there's a bunch of different classifications we can break this down into the first category that i kind of want to touch on is timed exclusives things that you had to be there during this window of time in order to obtain and I'd like to start out with some of my personal favorites here. The Easter eggs that we've seen over the course of the last couple of years within either Verdansk, Rebirth Island, some in Caldera, though not really giving you any sort of exclusive blueprint like others. But to start, we can talk about five initial rare blueprints here based off of Easter eggs. The very first one we ever saw was the Mud Robber MP7, part of the Bunker 11 Easter egg in Season 4 of Modern Warfare 2019 in the Warzone experience. This, upon gaining access to Bunker 11, not only gave you a bit of loot that could help you out in either your plunder or your battle royale, Royale matches, but also gave you some insight into the intel and the story coming throughout the next couple of seasons, and also gave you that Mud Robber MP7 blueprint. The first of its kind, and the first of still only a few that were locked behind an actual quest line you had to do in-game. Following and interacting with the phone code sequences, if you go across the entire map and do that entire puzzle in a short period of time, it was all yours. Now, the following season, we end up seeing the Enigma CR56 AMAX, this being for the Stadium Easter Egg in Season 5 of Warzone. This, you had to gain access to each of the three levels, server rooms, and follow the puzzles associated with each of them, and then if you could end up deciphering them, you could end up inputting that code into the third level conference room, if you want to call it that, which once you open that up outside, you'd end up seeing fireworks go off. You could get things like a loadout drop marker for free. You get some cash and other things, but also that CR56 AMAX Enigma blueprint. In season six, we saw the Firebrand Bruin blueprint for the subway station Easter egg within Warzone. This tasked with resetting the subway system so that you could end up accessing the maintenance station where you had to go into downtown Verdansk, go to the Capitol building and do a puzzle sequence that required you to interact with a computer behind the desk but also by examining different paintings throughout that Capitol building. Once you got the reset sequence down, you could go get on the next train and then make your way over to the station. From there, you had a bunch of stuff. You had things like a juggernaut available, specialist bonus, tons of cash, loadout drops, the new introduction of Foresight at the time, which showed you every single zone that was still to come within each match. But you also ended up getting that Firebrand Bruin blueprint. The following season, with the introduction of Cold War weaponry and that integration to follow, but also Rebirth Island, the first resurgence-based map that we'd see with within Warzone's experience, we had the ability to get the Red Room Milano Blueprint. This, you had to access the communication building's vault by finding a dropped briefcase with images around Rebirth Island that, once you went to those locations, had portions of a code listed, which, once you put those together, you'd go back into the communications building, get that, and of course, then unlock all the goodies in there, including the Red Room Milano Blueprint. Now, after a time, some couple of seasons later, that vault was opened up as just a regular playable area, and from that, you could actually go in and just pick it up right off a table. You could straight up just lay land there first thing, early game, pick it up, have a good SMG right off the rip, but also credit it to your account so that you had it forever. Then finally, the wall combat shield was available with the Rebirth Reinforced Easter Egg, not after one year, but after one year and a couple of months beyond that Rebirth Island Easter Egg to start in Season 1 of Cold War. You had to open up any of the golden vaults that was accessible by activating the phone sequence within the prison cell block, where you had to turn on the different TVs in the control center of the cell block by interacting with TV remotes. Once you did, you could pick up the phone, it would give you a code, and you could use that on any of the three vaults around the map. Now, this was also available again whenever we saw the zombies version of this come into play. It was Rebirth of the Dead for a short period of time. The only catch was that you had to clear the bunker of zombies, which they were pretty high in health, so it took quite a bit of ammo, and you probably drew a ton of attention to yourself to do so. But if you did, it was a way quicker way to access the golden vaults and to get that blueprint overall. Now, that's some Easter egg blueprints, but what about some other rare ones? Now, the next couple that I want to talk about, you had to be there for a very 
short period of time within Warzone to get them, these being reveal-specific blueprints. For this, we have three, one of which being firstly the Bay of Pigs SKS from the Know Your History event that debuted Black Ops Cold War in 2020. This was something that was around for a couple of hours for, I want to say, two to three, maybe four days total. But if you missed that playlist or you didn't complete the entire checklist of what you had to do before you could end up getting that weapon from Woods in the event, you didn't get it. Unfortunately, it wasn't something that was gifted to all players. You had to make sure that you completed enough of the event to actually do it. The Dark Forest RPD from Black Ops Cold War was another sort of blueprint that followed the same criteria. This being part of the Battle of Verdansk. This was the final unlock though, where you had to do the maximum damage possible to the train in that Battle of Verdansk event. Now, this is something that you may actually have, but if you were kind of just along for the ride, you only wanted to see the cutscene that came at the end, you didn't really shoot or do a ton of damage to the train, you probably don't have this one. And also, the Republican Parallel was from that Battle of Verdansk, but again, this one was more so easier to unlock, it was more so just if you took part in that event overall, and you did a little bit of help taking down that train. After that, I want to talk about some contraband contract blueprints, because for a little bit of time during the Modern Warfare era of Warzone, we had a contraband contract where you could end up not only getting cash in-game to work towards what Whatever utility you wanted to use, whether it be a UAV, buying your teammate back, a loadout drop, armor plates, whatever. But if you ended up doing this contract, it would take you to a landing zone where you had to call in an extract chopper and then interact with it. If you ended up doing that in game, you were able to earn a certain subset of exclusive blueprints that weren't seen anywhere else outside of that, save for one location, which we'll talk about in just a second. Those including the Lonely Lagoon AX50, my personal favorite of this, which was a sort of blue Damascus looking design to it, but not quite Damascus. The Carbonite EBR-14, the Fluid Dynamics Car 98K, and the Bat Out of Hell Striker 45. Now, like I mentioned, these all were available at one other location where those weren't the only ways to get them because they were introduced in the spring of 2021 for a second chance opportunity with quite literally an Easter egg contract that was available, where if you ended up finding these Easter baskets, you could end up interacting with the golden egg and then do that contract from there. So those were all incredibly rare, and if you missed out on those, you probably won't have the opportunity to get them again here in Warzone at all. Now, beyond that, we have some gunfight blueprints. These... These can be a bit more rare depending on which game we're talking about. Modern Warfare had a couple that were rare just because of the shorter in duration length of events and also some of when they were introduced. Whereas the Black Ops Cold War ones that we'll talk about are ones that are rare just because you had to actually grind out gunfight in order to get those. But starting with Modern Warfare 2019, the older of the two games here, the first that I want to talk about are the Royal Decree 50 GS because this was introduced as a reward for a shorter in length of tournament. This one was only a week End, as opposed to the normal one to two week in duration tournaments that we had all throughout the year. But beyond that, the Royal Decree was only available for a weekend at a time here at that in a shortened and initial gunfight tournament. So if you didn't jump on or you missed any of that gunfight and then also didn't win any of those gunfight tournaments, you wouldn't have the Royal Decree 50 GS. Now, another one that is kind of stupidly rare because it just wasn't seemingly meant to be a reward as such is the Veins of Gold Renetti. This was an accidental gunfight test tournament within season five that was only live for two to three hours. Not days, but hours. Now, this granted the Renetti blueprint to the very few that won, but when the gunfight tournament returned later that season, a few weeks down the road, the Spoiled Rotten Bruin was the reward for Season 5's gunfight tournament, not that Renetti Veins of Gold blueprint. So, if you have that one, spoiler alert, you might have one of the rarest blueprints within Warzone ever. Now, beyond that, of course, we have the Spoiled Rotten Bruin, the Grail Quest M4A1, the Riptide MP7, the Gremlin Og, and the Finish Line Holger 26 that also came throughout the life cycle of Modern Warfare 2019. But again, those were around for one to two weeks at a time where you could jump in, and the only sort of hurdle you had to do was make sure that you were the one winning the gunfight tournament. But with no limit on how many times you could enter that tournament, it was just a matter of if you were really able to jump on and grind it out during that time. Now, as for Black Ops Cold War, this list is going to be a little bit shorter because despite having more blueprints and more tournaments, the reason that I consider that a bit shorter is because the reward for tournaments was the sum of your total work. In Modern Warfare 2019, in order to earn a gunfight tournament blueprint, you had to win that specific tournament. If you missed it, it was the end of it. You never see it again. In Black Ops Cold War, however, you could miss the first tournament. Hell, you could miss the second, third, fourth, all the way up to the very last and still get that very first one. And the difference was that you could catch up on them at any time. So if you won one in that final tournament that was ever introduced, you could grind it out 11, 
12 times to get every single blueprint, but it was just a matter of how much you wanted to theoretically play catch up on those tournament rewards. So the rarest of these, not that the tournaments are run much more anymore, if at all, the rarest ones are the last few ones for those that completed every single tournament and won them. Those being the Exoskeleton Street Sweeper, Low Threat Groza, West Bank Wrecker Gallo 12, and the LC10 King Zone is probably that rarest of the Black Ops Cold War tournament blueprints. Now, beyond that, talking some more extra timed things with exclusivity, we saw a couple of things introduced in terms of free gifts given throughout Black Ops Cold War that could absolutely be classified as rare. We saw the Frozen Chosen, that was an M82 that was only available in a Christmas bundle for a very short period of time. The Military Green M16 was the Rebirth Island free bundle in Season 1 of Black Ops Cold War that was only available for a short window of time. The Renegade Ranger M16 that was available for the Outbreak event within Black Ops Cold War. And then finally, the last stop, Hour 77, was a limited time blueprint granted to players who logged into Cold War from the launch of the game on November 13th to when Nuketown was added just a week later on the 20th. So that one, a little bit rarer because you only had a week, whereas the other ones were, I believe, around two weeks time to redeem them. And rounding out these timed free blueprints are the few I'd say are the rarest of these timed free blueprints. The first of which being the COD Champs 2021 XM4. This was only redeemable on a singular day, Championship Sunday for the Cold War year of the CDL, where I want to say around the 45 to 60 minute mark of watching the matches on Championship Sunday, if you had your account linked to your YouTube account, it was redeemed for free, but it was very much so a matter of if you weren't there, you missed it, and you weren't able to get it ever again. Now, in that same vein, the year following, just a couple of months ago now at this point with COD Champs in Vanguard, we ended up seeing two more introduced here. On Saturday, there was a viewership reward for watching 60 minutes of matches on Saturday. We had the spring Sprinkles Volkstrom Gewehr. Then on Champs Sunday at 45 minutes, you had the Champs Automaton. Two blueprints that again, if you were not there for those specific days watching for that specific amount of time, you were not able to unlock those, making all three of those relatively rare in the grand scheme of things. And finally, to round out our sort of section on timed blueprints here, these ones were timed, but not necessarily free blueprints, not necessarily ones that you could earn or anything like that. But instead, these were introduced with a few bundle sets of blueprints across the Godzilla vs. Kong and Terminator events here in the last year with Vanguard, where if you purchased all of the bundles in those events, three bundles and two respectively, you got additional bonus blueprints. Now, that means they're worth like $60 and $40 each, and because of that, a lot of people may not have gotten these, which if you did, you may still not have them. Redemption has been bugged the last couple of weeks to months here, it seems. But these include the Apex Phase Rifle for the Owen Gun and the Target Acquired for the Whitley. Those having a pair of criteria for not only one being timed, but also the fact that you had to buy into both both of those and get the entire sets of them. Now, beyond that, I want to talk about some mode specific rare blueprints, things you could only get in certain modes. Firstly, Spec Ops. I want to start with one here because there's a couple you could get for Spec Ops, but the only one that's really kind of rare to me is the Beachcomber Kilo 141. This is a seven challenge mission set, but it's oriented around Spec Ops survival, something that for a whole year was PlayStation exclusive, and likely not much of the general public went back to play Spec Ops of all things and worked on this to unlock it when Black Ops Cold War is the primary title, and of course when Vanguard is the primary title this year. Now, you can still go back and earn this if you want, but if you have it right now, you are a part of the rare few that do end up having it. Now, as for zombies within Black Ops Cold War, this is actually something that offered a handful of different blueprints for those who ended up grinding out zombies, but for the most part, a lot of these actually are, again, PlayStation exclusive for some time. Firstly, the Soviet Red AK-47. That was available via the Onslaught Diminishing Light LTM. The Hellhawk QBZ, Crow Storm Type 63, and the Primal Hunter Diamati were all Onslaught Chalice rewards, but probably the rarest of these in terms of the zombies blueprint Prince was the Bronzewood Tundra LW3. This was the Onslaught Holiday Season reward, which tasked you with killing 25 zombies in Onslaught with snowballs. Now, for those that aren't aware, this event only lasted about a week or two, and also, again, was part of a PlayStation exclusive mode. So, as for the others, where you can go back and play Onslaught now and get these done if you want to some degree, those that are the Chalice rewards, this you absolutely cannot get if you were trying to go back and do it again. It was only available for PlayStation users for a very small window of time. So all of those make the rarest list here, in my opinion, as well. The next, honestly, handful, 
I'd classify as rare just because of archiving. If you've played the entire time, you're probably one of the few people that ends up having all of these. Whereas not everybody may have been there from season zero of Modern Warfare 2019 and playing and grinding out everything since then. So let's talk about some seasonal and progressional items here with this. Starting with seasonal blueprints, these we're talking about seasonal events. Starting with the games of summer in Modern Warfare 2019, we saw the Grau 556 steeplechase. This required you to get five gold stars in the two week long challenge set. In The Haunting of Verdansk in Season 6, we saw the Growl 556 have the Pumpkin Punisher. That required 16 challenges to be completed. In Season 1 of Black Ops Cold War, the Hazardous Krig 6 was rewarded for those that completed these 16 challenges with a Rebirth event. In the Outbreak event, you had the opportunity to complete the Grey Matter Tundra LW3 and the Teal Drop 1911 for completing different challenges across Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. These were both available in prior Contraband contracts as well that came back for a limited time. During the 80s Action Heroes event, we had the Ignition Pelican and Flame Bearer DMR blueprints again for the challenges of either Black Ops Cold War or Warzone. During the Groundfall event, we had the Private Party Magnum. Now, after that Private Party Magnum for the Groundfall event, Season 5 and Season 6 of Black Ops Cold War didn't really offer the same blueprint rewards that we saw with regular seasonal events here with this. Instead, with Season 5 and 6, we actually got the base unlocks for the weapons of the Psy Melee and the Lapa SMG, those being more organic ways to unlock them and in a seemingly quicker time frame, though that may be debatable. Now, in Season 6, we did actually Actually get another blueprint for the completion of the Secrets of the Pacific event, that being the Bomber Menace STG blueprint. For Season 1 of Vanguard with the Festive Fervor event, we saw the Old Timey Type 11. We saw the Toxic Heavy DP-27 with Season 2 and Rebirth reinforced. We saw the Ancient Rivalry SVT-40 for Season 3 with Godzilla vs. Kong. And Season 4's overall reward, this is where things started to change within, again, these seasonal offerings. Season 4's overall reward for the Mercenaries of Fortune event wasn't a blueprint, but instead was a vehicle skin. Perhaps the better of rewards, though, was the Universal Camos awarded for simple challenges. The same was also seen later on in that Terminator event that we saw a little later on down the line, where you could earn cooler looking blueprints and even a secret Skynet camo for hitting 20 wins in the Titanium Trials event. But right now, we're talking about blueprints. The final blueprints came down to this past season here, or rather current season, but beginning of season five with Vanguard. This, we ended up seeing the Heroes vs. Villains event, which tasked you with choosing a side, and then at the end of it, whatever side won, you ended up getting a free blueprint out of it. So therefore, by default, while we ended up all getting the Villain's Vengeance MP40 blueprint. If you have the Hero's Hand MP40 blueprint, you're in rare company with that one. They're the exact same build, just different color schemes, but that's something that if you have the one that wasn't gifted for free, you have a rarer blueprint within Warzone. To round out the video, we're going to talk about some seasonal things here. Again, archival almost, where if you end up having all of these, you've probably just been around since the very beginning and may not be a part of the majority that do end up having all of this. Plus, we'll talk about some special edition items, early access, and some exclusives as well. So let's just start out with the seasonal blueprints. We can breeze past all of these because they're relatively simple. You had to get to 155 in Modern Warfare 2019. You had to get to level 50 after your first prestige of a new season in Black Ops Cold War and Vanguard. So we can breeze past all these. You just simply had to play to earn these, but it's rarer if you have all of them going all the way back to season zero with the OG M4A1. This was the M16, but actually the M16 that we knew from prior Call of Duty games, even coming along with those specific iron sights and carry handle as opposed to just having to use the burst attachment on the M4. Then in Season 1 for Modern Warfare, we saw the Warhead M91. In Modern Warfare Season 2, we saw the Codebreaker FR556. Season 3 saw the introduction of the Fugitive FN Scar 17. Modern Warfare Season 4 introduced the Sandbar Kilo 141. Season 5 introduced the Dawn to Dusk Fennec. And Modern Warfare Season 6 introduced the Slipper Clutch Og. Now, going into Black Ops Cold War, again, after you reached your first prestige and you hit level 50, that's when you got the Green Machine M6. In Season 1, you ended up having the Hauer 77 Nightfall. Season 2 brought the Pit Viper MP5. Season 3 brought the Disarmament Tundra, which honestly I think is my favorite out of the blueprints that we got for free in terms of the seasonal ranking rewards. Then we ended up seeing the Hanjo Diamati, another really good one in Season 4. The Salty and Sweet Mac 10 was a decent one in Season 5. And the Wet Ops Groza was introduced for Season 6 of Black Ops Cold War. Season 1 of Vanguard brought along the Debt Collector STG44. Season 2 brought along the February Frost Type 99. Season 3 brought along the Scrap Heap Bar, Season 4 brought along the Blood Covenant Whitley, and Season 5 brought along the Osiris Wave Whitley. So, two Whitleys in two seasons here, but that rounds out the seasonal blueprints for just completion. Beyond that, we had some early access, some special edition stuff here, where the Modern Warfare 2019 AK-47 Master Adventurer, that's one that I'd probably say is in rare company, because that was something you had to go out of your way and take part in the Pawn Takes Pawn ARG campaign, which was promoing Black Ops Cold War at the time. If you ended up doing all of the steps, you ended up getting the Modern Warfare 
Warfare Master Adventurer for the AK, which not many may have done. Then finally to round things off, if you had PlayStation, these are still exclusive to you if you want to go back and play Modern Warfare 2019 for any of the missions that you had on offer. The Jack Frosty Scar, the Lucky Strike MG32, the Ambush Ram 7, the Cold Rift Uzi, the Grand Rapids M4, the Tidepool HDR, the Howler M19, and the Tenderizer R90. Now the final ones before we talk about the definitive, I'd say top 10 here for rarest camos of Warzone's history. A couple of bonus ones here because there's some asterisks on it. I've heard that these don't actually transfer over into Warzone, but honestly, I don't know that I've known anybody personally that has had these to double check for sure. These being the Pro Issue CDL blueprints from Ranked Play in Black Ops Cold War, where you had the ability to get the Pro Issue Diamati, which was earned by winning 20 matches, the Pro Issue Krig 6, which is earned by winning 50 matches, and the Pro Issue AK-74U, which was earned by winning 100 matches in ranked play of Cold War. So incredibly rare blueprints, but again, not entirely sure if those transfer over into Warzone, but if you're just talking blueprints, I guess we can kind of throw those in the mix. Now, if I were to give a definitive one to 10 list, that is a very tough thing to whittle all these down, but I do think that we might be able to give it a shot. For that, I'd say starting at number 10, the Lonely Lagoon AX50, again, only being something that was the very first contraband contract, if I'm not mistaken, and around for a limited amount of time. It did come back, sure, in those reintroductions of the contraband contracts, but still found in very little quantity. Next at number nine, I'd say the Master Adventurer AK-47 from Modern Warfare, that pawn takes pawn ARG, just because that took so much time outside of what you may be used to to end up doing, and then you'd have to go out of your way to redeem the code for it. So that I'd put it up there. The Soviet Red AK-47 from Black Ops Cold War. That's the Onslaught Diminishing Light LTM blueprint again. So not many people had the option to play that LTM and also it was only PlayStation exclusive. So multiple sort of levels of gatekeeping on that one. For number seven, six, and five, I'd say these are the Champs Rewards. The Sprinkles Volks from Gravere and the Champs Automaton from this year for Saturday and Sunday viewership rewards. And then the COD Champs XM4 from last year and Black Ops Cold War on Championship Sunday. At number four, I'd say the Royal Decree 50 GS just because it was only available for one weekend as opposed to others that were around for much longer. Plus, you ended up having to win that entire gunfight tournament, something that not a lot of people ended up doing, even if they partook in that. After that, I'd say the LC10 King's Own, that being another gunfight blueprint reward, but for those that ended up going out of their way and doing all 12 of those gunfight tournaments and winning every single one throughout the course of Black Ops Cold War's main year of support. After that, I'd say the Bronzewood Tundra LW3, that Onslaught holiday season reward. Again, something PlayStation exclusive and something that was only around for a very limited amount of time and that not many people even know about this blueprint. So I'd put that up there. And then finally, I'd probably say the Veins of Gold Renetti from Modern Warfare 2019, another gunfight blueprint reward, but again, was only around for a couple of hours. And when it came back in the same sort of format for that season's gunfight tournament, it was not available again. So that's something that very, very few people have this, and I'd say is probably the rarest blueprint we have within Warzone and this legacy era that we have right now. So that said, that's what we're gonna call it. That is my list here for the rarest blueprints in all of Warzone's history that we know right now. So I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down below. How many of these do you have yourself? How many did you just not even know existed? What are the case? Drop your thoughts below, but if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay updated with all things Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, DMZ, and anything Call of Duty related. As we round out this Warzone 1 era, I'm looking forward to what's next. And if you guys would like to join us on the road to half a million subscribers as we push towards it, I'd love to have you. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.